Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and happy St. Patrick's Day as well as launch day or embargo day, I should say, for the uh, Radeon RX 6700 XT Team Rocket Edition with that gigantic big R right in the middle. Man, that is a, that is a big, big R right in the middle of this graphics card. You can see it without the light hit and I got to kind of twist it as I see there in my viewfinder. So there you go. That's the card. Two fan design this time versus the three fans we saw uh, on 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 the big on the bigger card, we'll get a little bit more into the design in uh, a moment. But today we'll be testing this card at 1080p, 1440p. I'm going to be comparing it directly up against the 3070 and the 3060 Ti because I felt like this sort of slots right in between those, at least as far as MSRPs are concerned, which is how we're supposed to compare these things. Can't worry about aftermarkets um, when it comes to this stuff, even though you probably won't be able to buy this card tomorrow anyway. But you know, it's what we're going to do. We're going to test it. So. Let's not waste too much more time. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen. And all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. Just briefly, I will go over the aesthetics of the card, which I do like. I really loved the reference designs on the 6800 cards and the 6900 XT. Uh, really solid reference designs from AMD. Really glad to see them going in this direction with these metal shrouds uh, and not doing blower style coolers. Obviously, this one did shrink down to two fans from three. Didn't have any issues there in terms of cooling. Card rank cool and quiet as you would really expect. No particular issues there whatsoever. It is a dual slot card. It's got an eight pin and a six pin power connector. And we've also got a nice backplate on here as well, which kind of just continues and flows along the entire card, which is what we saw uh, on the 6800 series cards and 6900. Uh, Nvidia also has very similar sort of looking design with the silver and black industrial look and uh, just preference, but it's something I really do like. I wish AMD would get the red off the side of the card. Though that is really the only thing that does kind of bother me on their designs is that that red, which I know is their branding, but it just doesn't fit into a lot of builds. Give us RGB. Let us choose whatever colors we want. If we want to support Team Red and put red in our case, then let us do it. But I like to have the options. I kind of do feel like aesthetically, it sort of locks you into a certain theme, unfortunately, if you do care about that sort of thing. But obviously, at the end of the day, performance is the most important thing. And you could always get an aftermarket card that suits the aesthetic that you like, and they'll probably perform almost identically to this card, although you may have, you know, better luck overclocking and all that stuff. Uh, for all my testing today here, I was running at stock settings, as I always do for all of my initial reviews on any graphics cards. Of course, I was using the latest driver from AMD, which was a, a press release driver, which will release very likely tomorrow, uh, alongside when the card was, uh, when the card's scheduled to come out. And for NVIDIA on my cards, I was running uh, driver 461 dot seven two. So that was the latest one that I did have uh, from them. As far as my test setup is concerned, I was using an i9-900K at 4.8 gigahertz, along with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 32 100 megahertz and yeah all games tested at ultra settings unless otherwise noted although nothing was tested differently everything was just tested at the ultra presets or something like red dead 2 which doesn't have presets you just kind of push all the sliders up so that's uh, what was utilized there for that so let's without further ado get into the benchmark starting off at 1080p with the average fps then we'll go to the one percent lows and continue on to our 1440p data so taking a look at the 1080p numbers here, I think it should be quite apparent right out of the gate that these are all very demanding titles that I tested here, which have all come out within the past couple of years. And at 1080p, not a single one of these cards with these extremely demanding titles is going to have an issue with 1080p whatsoever. So that's one part of the conversation out of the way. But as I said, very demanding titles. We've got Valhalla, Borderlands 3, Division 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, Red Dead 2 on Vulcan, and Watch Dogs Legion with DXR on Ultra. Um, so yeah, and as far as APIs, if games had options for APIs, I used whatever in my previous testing had proven to be the better performing uh, API and the most fair between the two uh, different companies, NVIDIA and AMD, which sometimes work different. But yeah, back to the, the 1080p numbers here. Again, in the, the 6700 XT price-wise does sit between the 3070 and 3060 Ti, uh, but really it's more 
trading blows with the 3070, although they're kind of all in a very even pattern uh, in some games, except for ones that really, really favor AMD. I'm looking at you, Borderlands 3. I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If the next three to five years, the only two games you want to play are AC Valhalla or Borderlands 3, uh, yeah, buy a big Navi card because they absolutely crush NVIDIA in those two games. But they are outliers, and Valhalla is uh, probably one of the biggest outliers of any games in testing uh, NVIDIA versus AMD currently right now on these most recent architectures released from them. Uh, but continue on down the line, Division 2 seemed to favor uh, NVIDIA on the 3070, winning out at 146 versus 133 in the 6700 XT. And the 3060 Ti uh, is really a big story here in this testing, is it actually gets really close to both of these cards, and at MSRP, you would be able to find it at what I would say to be considerably uh, more affordable. It almost is really seeming like the mid-range champ uh, right now here in the first quarter of 2021. Continue on, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, that had a very strong showing for the 6700 XT, winning by one frame versus 3070, but it did good, beat both cards. Um, so yeah, it's sort of split here. I mean, is, 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 you know, NVIDIA's taken three games with the 370, AMD's taken three games with their card. So really kind of a tough one to call between these cards. Honestly, none of them are, are bad cards in any way for 1080p gaming. If you get any of them, you're going to be fine. And that's going to be the story I feel like at the end of this review is just that, should you buy it? Yeah if you can find it with any, and that's the story with any of these cards. Moving on to the 1% lows, I'll throw those up now here. Nothing alarming uh, really stuck out about any of this data. If you want to pause it and sift through it, feel free to go ahead and do so. Um, the main takeaway that I found from this is that the 3060 Ti, our lowest end card here, still managed to keep a 1% low of 60 FPS in AC Valhalla. So that was the lowest number we saw in this. So not a single one of these cards had 1% lows below 60 in any of these highly demanding titles that I did test here at 1080p. But let's move over to 1440p now, a little bit more GPU demanding. And yeah, I was very pleased actually to see the testing here on all three cards. But again, really more specific on the 3060 Ti, uh, really surprised me how well it held in there with the 3070 and the 6700 XT. Really doing an incredible job. And it kind of makes you think that the 6700 XT, maybe if they had gone with the eight gigabytes of VRAM instead of 12 gigabytes, and cut the cost down on this card maybe another $50. It could have been a very, very aggressive competitor against the 3070. Because you could see here at 1440p, it's almost splitting titles. They won two games here um, against NVIDIA, tied in one, and then NVIDIA took a few more. So at 1440p, the 3070 did end up winning one more game. But, you know, big deal at the end of the day. If we would have tested 50 games, you know, it probably would have been pretty close, like 25 to 25 uh, as far as games won. It's really going to come down at the end of the day to what you happen to be playing. But again, 1440p maxed out on these games, all running really good. So I don't feel like you can go wrong with really any of them if you want to play at that resolution. Um, yeah, 3060 Ti does fall behind a little bit here in the 1% lows uh, on some games, on Watch Dogs Legion. But again, you could tweak options. AC Valhalla did fall all the way down to 47 on the 3060 Ti. Um, so yeah, you might want to tweak some options if you're looking to play 1440p completely maxed out on you know certain really demanding titles. But yeah, for the most part, you're going to be getting pretty smooth sailing, especially if you're looking to play anything like competitive first-person shooters, which honestly aren't that demanding to run. Things like Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike, you name it. Stuff like that, not going to really be an issue for any of these cards to run at 1440p. So those are all the uh, the benchmarks that you got. You know, the, the prices on these cards, you know, range, you know, at MSRP, again, we're looking at about... Uh, you know, a hundred to one hundred and thirty dollar price range here between um, the three different cards that that we tested uh, for MSRP again. That is so. At the at the end of the day, which one would I get? Whichever one you can find. That's it. That's really I cannot say the sixty seven hundred XT is one hundred percent better than the thirty seventy. Go and buy it. It's not the case. They're kind of splitting differences here. Um, I do wish the MSRP on the 6700 XT was lower, as I said. I feel like at 480, uh, you know, only 20 bucks behind the 3070, I think it could be a little lower, maybe 450. And if they were to say, if they had an 8 gigabyte version of this, and they could drop that price down to something like, say, maybe even 399, maybe 429 around there. Um, yeah, I think they would have a very, very aggressive competitor for the 3070, and it would be a hard recommendation, honestly, at that point. But $20, eh, not really going to make a huge difference. Maybe you want the more VRAM, but at 1080p and 1440p, I don't feel like that extra four gigabytes is going to make a massive difference in games as far as, you know, what games are allocating versus what they're actually even using, which 
very often is not anywhere near what they allocate and what you see in things like MSI Afterburner. So at the end of the day, yeah, I can wholeheartedly recommend the 6700 XT. It's a fine graphics card. Just don't pay more than what it's worth. I would not pay more than $500 for any variants of the 6700 XT. Bottom line, if you see any 6700 XTs over 500 bucks, I would walk away. Um, don't pay more than what these cards are worth in, in general, but really I feel like this card is at max, like it's like a four to $500 card. Um, and I feel like it's more to the lower end of that. So uh, I feel like yeah, like the pricing could do a little work here, but between this and the 3070, it's splitting hairs. Pick which whatever you like or whichever one you can find in stock at the price that you can afford. Uh, and then for, between all three of these, I do think the 3060 Ti is the best card out of all three for the money cheapest card here and hangs in pretty damn close with both of these uh, other two cards at 1080 1440. So to me, that was like the sort of winner, I guess you can call it. Um, even though it didn't have the highest frames, I think it's the best value here. And that was kind of my takeaway from this. And please let me know down in the comments below what your takeaway here was uh, testing on the 6700 XT. If you're able to find these in stock tomorrow, I hope that you can if you wanted to get one. And uh, best of luck to all of you guys and uh, fuck the scalpers. Fuck the miners, and uh, best of luck to you on getting your 6700 XT. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and enjoy my St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy your corned beef and green beer, you slags, and I will see you tomorrow for another video.